Hello again, it's Wendy at Summer Bay Studio. Today I'm doing something kind of fun and different. I'm going to use a stamp instead of drawing and I'm going to watercolor with it. Now there are a few secrets you need to know. One is you need to use archival ink because it won't run when the water hits it. I have some other stamp pads and I, I tried all of them. Some of them are okay and some of them just go like a flood hit them. So I'm going to use this one, which is a dark brown. Coffee is the color, mainly because I don't have a black one that's really archival. I have a nice juicy black one, but it's the one that ran like crazy. So I'm using this one, and I thought since it's springtime right now, I would use this tulip um, stamp that I've had for years. And I've cut a piece of watercolor paper. Now this particular paper has a rougher side and a smoother side. And I'm going to use the smoother side and I cut it to this almost exactly the same size as the stamp because um, I'm going to use it as to cut out afterwards so it doesn't need to be any bigger than that. So to begin with I'm just going to ink my stamp really well and these, I find these big stamps are, are a little bit more reticent to take the ink so I tend to go around and around and make sure that everything gets a, a good a juicy amount on there. And now I'm going to turn my paper over onto it with the smooth side down and just kind of line it up here and then just rub it all over so that I make sure that everything gets pressed. And it doesn't matter if there's ink around it on the sides or anything because I'm going to eventually cut that off anyway. So I want it to be, I want to make sure I don't miss anything. I want it to be be good and good and dark as dark as it can be. There's an area that might got might have been missed. If I had a brayer or a roller, I'd probably use that, but I don't, so I'm using my fingers. So let's see what we've got. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. So I don't need this anymore and I don't need this anymore, but I'm going to take one of these baby wipes and just wash off that ink while I still can because if it dries then it's not going to be so amenable to being wiped away. Oh, this is a, a good foamy one. It's nice to have a nice clean stamp because they do transfer colors. And then I've got paper towel here. And I'll just dry that off. And then it's ready for next time. So we'll just move that out of the way. Wrap this back up. But if I don't, then I, it'll dry out. Okay, now what we need to do is wait for this to be good and dry and then I'm going to start watercoloring so I'll just get my paints out now and if you've watched my other videos where I've got watercolor as a as a practice or a concept you recall that when I when I work with colors I, I do leave them in in the mixing pan because um, I can pick them up and sort of reconstitute them again if I want to use that color and if I don't I just spray it with some water and just wipe it out and get it all cleaned off so today I probably will use some of these colors but I haven't decided which ones and I want this to become really decently dry so I'm gonna let leave that for a few minutes and I'll be back okay my ink on my watercolor paper is good and dry so I'm going to start painting and what I'm planning to do is paint because this is quite small I'm using a small brush this is a number four and I plan to just paint so that the lines still show more or less and I'm starting out with um, quinacridone rose because I happen to like 
pink flowers. And I might even run it into this as time goes on, which is a mixture of a, a bunch of different things. This is permanent rose that I'm adding now. So what I want to do to start with is just keep it quite, quite wet, that is quite thin. And I'm going to just refold this so that it doesn't get mixed up with anything else, like stamping ink. And then I'm going in, because like I said, it's small and fine, I'm going to go in and just fill in the spaces like this. So this is the kind of thing um, you don't need to know how to draw to do. Now I can draw, but it's not always my favorite thing to be honest. Sometimes I want to just get straight to the color. And you can make it as as filled in as you want to. I, want, I like to keep a bit of white. So I'm going to just not fill it in really solidly. I also want to have some contrast between the different petals so that you can see that, for example, this one is in front of that one. So I'll just make that a little bit darker there. And I need a bit more water. Now you can tell here if I just dab in some color what's going to happen. It's going to make another layer of darker color. Which happens in you know in the usually at the base of the flower. I don't have a lot of water in my brush because I, I don't want it to be too sloppy. It's a little bit harder to control then. Now rather than doing the other one, I'm going to do the stem. And I'm going to use this, this permanent yellow green, which is a nice spring green. And I'm going to allow it to mix with the pink that's at the base of the flower. Because if you ever look at a flower, usually there's there's a bit of green in the bottom. Now I went over that line a little bit, but I don't mind. I don't mind if you don't mind. So I want to, I'm gonna have to be careful here because there's a third flower in here, as you can see here. And I want it to be sure to stand out from the rest. So I think I'll, I'm going to use this salmon color because I have it here and because I think it's such a pretty color. I'm going to go in and paint this one with that so that we have a bouquet of different colors in our flowers. I want this to be a little bit more vibrant, I guess is the word. So I've added that pink in as well. Now I could have gone the other way. I could have made it more, more orange. And I think I'll do that on these, this petal over here. Go back to that orangey color. However, I want to make sure that I don't touch what's already painted there because it's still wet. I want to leave a little bit of white showing anyway. So you can see this is fairly fine work, kind of fussy. Now I happen to put um, 
some paint where I don't want it. So I'm going to use this little Q-tip and pick that up because I think that part needs to be yellow. And it's usually a really bright yellow. So I'm, I'll put this in. And then once this whole flower is dry, then I'll, I'll go back in and do the rest. All right, now I want to make this tulip yellow. Tulips come in so many colors. Um, and they've, this year they were just beautiful in the little town where I live. They have tulip beds all over the place. And one of them was this white one that had, had pink underneath coming up. And they were about two feet tall. And the, the blossoms were about that big. It was just gorgeous. And if you've seen pictures of tulip fields, we have tulip fields around here where I live. And also into down into Washington State. And um, when they're all in bloom, they're just spectacular. So I'm adding more color into the bottom here. And then I'm going to do the same with this one, which is just put the green stem in it, but let it touch the yellow so that they can kind of bleed together. And I want to make sure it doesn't touch this pink because I don't want that bleeding together. Okay, so there's that one. Now this one, I'm going to put the stem in first. And then I need to just darken it up a little bit. That's a bit pale. Make it a bit more intense. And then I want to add, make the leaves slightly different because in fact they are slightly different. And I'm using sap green from my big palette, which I'll show you. So it's this color here. And the reason I'm using it from this palette and not this one, which is also called sap green, is because the color is quite different. And it obviously it came from different manufacturers and they're, there's, it's not so standardized that they're going to end up being the same. So I usually prefer the one that's in my big palette. And I'm just going over the brown lines here because the watercolor is transparent and it actually shows through. Now, I don't have to. In fact, I might leave a couple of spots, just some streaks like that. Not go right out to the edge. And then come over here. In a way, this technique, by using a stamp, it's almost like an ink and wash. So with, with ink and wash, you usually have um, an outline with ink and then watercolor in it. Or you, you can put the watercolor down first and then outline afterwards in ink. Or you can do it the other way around. But in this case, the um, stamp and the ink from the stamp is acting as the ink instead of a drawing. And frankly, it saves a lot of time. And also you get a beautiful image that you probably like anyway and it's good practice so you can practice using this kind of ink and wash technique by just using a, a rubber stamp and heaven knows there are so many designs that are just spectacular I used to sell rubber stamps so I kind of have a collection of them In here, you can see where the shading is. Um, what I want to do is make that darker. So I'm going to use a, a darker green, and that's this one. It's called Hooker's Green. And I'm going to add a little blue to it. This, this blue that's here. You can see what a gorgeous color that makes. So I'm putting some of that in there too taking out the extra water. And I'm going to go in behind here, leaving the stem and just 
put some of that in there and then it's bleeding where I don't want it to so I'm going to push it back and then take it down into here as well on that little spot though just so that it shows that things are in shadow here gives it a little bit more dimension and and the markings on the stamp kind of give away where you want more intensity so if I look at this I could say okay well I want more intensity here and here and maybe over in there and in behind here so you could use that and I'll, I'll put a little bit more in here just so it's clear that this is um, a different surface of the leaf it's got a curl on it okay so I'm going to put this in which comes in, in as solid and I've got some black here too much water there that is not black enough if you want real black you have to use lamp black because Payne's gray is kind of bluish so I'm going to make this little thing black black it's the stamen on the flower like that and I'm going to go back into this tulip here and add a little bit of a different color Sometimes on the top of my paints, I just go from one to the next. Like this, you can see there's some green in there. So next time I use it, if I want that pure yellow, I have to kind of wash that off, which is what I'm doing now with this cadmium yellow. Now I don't want it to be too wet, so I want to leave some of that wetness in there and go in here and darken these little bits up. And then also add some more of this deeper color in the bottom so that gives it more of a rounded shape. And I'm going to do the same in here. Uh, this was this pink. So I want it to be darker behind that little curl. And I want it to be darker along in the bottom here. Also, probably a little bit behind these curls. There's one that kind of folds over. And then down into the center. We can't really see the center because of the petals, but that gives it a little bit more shape. Now I can do the same thing here, now that this is all dry. And go in around this little black stamen fill in with some more color and then add some depth in the bottom so that it doesn't look like it's just all one color like that and also on this little curl over here now um, I can make I can give the the petals a bit more color and dimension and I think this one needs it here because this has kind of a curled edge so what I'm going to do with this is put it along the edge here and then I want to soften it so I take all the all the paint out of my brush squeeze out the water and then just run it along the side there and that makes the paint that I've painted on there bleed into that damp area now this is about all there is to it so what I'm going to do now is um, let it dry completely and then I'm going to cut it out but first I want to paint this now this is incredibly tiny so I need an incredibly tiny brush with a really sharp point which would mean um, I've got a two and a one but the Two has a better point than the one. I also have a zero. This is the one I'll use. Holds almost no water. Now the question is what color to paint this word? And I think I like this pink. So I'm going to pick some of that up and very carefully fill in this word. This was definitely the right brush for the job. Anything bigger, I'd have too much water and it would flow all over the place. 
and in particular over the edges of the stamp stamped image and we don't want that and because this is a sable brush it holds more paint than you can imagine basically I mean it looks like it has only a few hairs but because of the of the um, nap on the hairs it actually holds water So I'm going to go down here in this very, very fine line on the A. There, it worked out. All right, I'm letting this dry now and then I'll be back in a minute. My painting is all dry now and I had thought I would cut it out, but I've been giving it a little bit of thought while it was drying and I think what I'm going to do instead is put it into this journal and You'll see what I mean in a moment. Now, I'm finished with my paints, so I'll just move those off because I don't need them there and they don't need to be in the line of messes. So I found this page in this little journal that I've been working on. This is a soft cover one. And when I'm finished it, it will be for sale on my store. So if you're interested, be sure to get on the mailing list at Summer Bay Studio and you can get a whole bunch of free stuff, plus you'll find out when this is ready. Now what I what I think I'm going to do, I found this page, and I, I love this old paper, and it's from the, it's actually from the altered book that I've been working on. I think what I'm going to do is make it into a pocket, and I've, there's two ways I could do this. One is to glue it down here, and the other is to glue it this way so that it's, it can hold something on this side. And I haven't really decided what to put in it. I thought it maybe about this, but I really like the idea of having this side open. So I'm going to do that. And I have some, some little cards here with tulips on them that they just came that way, which would be perfect in there. So first I'm going to distress the, um, the edges. And I just recently got this, this pink color of the Tim Holtz Distress Ink. And I'll put a link below for this. It's called Worn Lipstick, which I wanted kind of a peachy pink and I got it. So I'm going to do the edges here. It's fairly bright, but that's okay. It ties in really, really well with the paint. So let's just finish off that part. I think, you know what, I think I'm going to do this one as well, because why not? Uh, I need something to cover that so that I don't accidentally get this ink on it as well on the page underneath, because I might not want that. And this is kind of a torn edge. I tore it out of the book. And it still has, you know, the chapter heading and whatever, which is called Ethel. It's obviously about someone named Ethel from this old book. This book is from the 1950s. So let's just do this so that they kind of blend together well. Put that out of the way. Put that away. Cover this up so it stays nice and juicy. Ah, that works really nicely. Okay, so I just need my glue. And I also just recently got this glue that everyone is raving about. I'm going to make sure to glue the right side so it's here and here and here. And what I discovered about this glue right off the bat is that it comes out pretty darn fast. Even though it has a really tiny nozzle, it comes out. It must be fairly, fairly liquid because it sure comes squirting out of here. Just want to spread it around a little bit so that I don't have any big blobs like that. So like I said, it seems fairly liquid. Now, just lift this up. I think this is the perfect journal to have this watercolor in because it already has an original watercolor on the front. So I'm just placing this. I 
in here and though the glue is definitely squirting out along the edges it does glue quickly that's good there so that can go in there and this little card can go in here either direction I like it this way I think it says I will thank you Lord with all my heart I will tell of all the marvelous things you have done I will be filled with joy because of you that's from Psalm Psalms 9 1 and 2 beautiful verse and I feel the same way very often there oh I like it like this because the the tulips poke out but you know what I'm going to also distress this edge I've had these little cards on my desk or on my buffet or something for so long and I thought you know what these would make nice little cards for junk journal projects so there we have it this is um, an easy project you can use any stamp that you want to anything that you have and just make sure that you use archival or permanent ink on your ink pad and let it dry completely before you start painting and then just use a small brush and paint whatever colors you want and make it into whatever you want to. I hope you've enjoyed this project. I have. And I hope that you will take a moment and subscribe to my channel and click the little bell in the down below. And I'll see you next time.